Tom Call. I'm the sports editor with Beaver Dam Daily Citizen. I'm James Wold, the assistant sports editor for the Beaver Dam Daily Citizen. And today we're going to talk about our all-area basketball teams, both boys and girls. And you'll see the uh, girls one in a uh, second video. That's true. We'll start off with the boys. Uh, I've seen every team in the area play twice this year, boys and girls. And I'll tell you, we've uh, got way more candidates probably than spots this year. It's been a it's been a really good year for basketball in our area. Well, we're going to jump right in uh, where the boys are concerned. And our player of the year is Wapan junior guard Mason Damask. Uh, his all-around skills as a sophomore, he showed he had the ability to handle the ball, be able to shoot with distance uh, you know, in terms of being a point guard. And uh, he combined that with some more explosive uh, aspects to his game and uh, his ability to rebound and play in the paint or whatever. I just feel like that combination really put him a cut above. Yeah, and I mean, it's not that he's uh, he's clutch too. Uh, in the playoff game against Columbus, uh, they were down three with five seconds left and uh, Columbus decided to foul rather than letting him attempt to shoot a three. And he made the first free throw, intentionally missed the second free throw, somehow managed to get his own rebound and was fouled while trying to shoot it, made both free throws then to end up forcing overtime. And if it wasn't for Aaron Armatoski and uh, the heroics that he showed, uh, he would have had another game against Ripon and could have maybe given the Tigers a little bit of uh, something to think about. It's kind of funny that uh, intentionally missed free throw was uh, the difference between Damas being 90% from the line for the year. Um, you know, just a kid that really, obviously a gym rat, coach's kid, really... Uh, Put in the time in terms of working hard at his game in the off season, and just uh, you know, Wapon had a good season. I think they were hoping for a little more, but this is a team that never really was able to maintain continuity in terms of illness and injury. And uh, we're not going to put that on uh, Mason Damas. So congratulations to him for being the player of the year. And to continue on with our first team, uh, we have Fall River senior guard Billy Ball. Uh, just a, uh, a very efficient player, uh, could do a little bit of everything for him, uh, guarded the, the opposing team's best player, uh, could pass, could score, but uh, and was the Trailway South player of the year, and uh, uh, particularly in the Houstonford game when uh, they needed a big game from uh, a Fall River kid to, to clinch the title outright, uh, he was the guy who stepped up. Yeah, the only Pirate uh, starter to average double figures throughout the year, and uh, early game they had a couple football injuries lingering a couple losses maybe that they didn't expect and so they get Deerfield at home and Bull just goes off in the first quarter and that game turns into a blowout and once he got a rolling Fall River was really difficult to deal with. The Pirates also had problems with free throw shooting this year and uh, he really shot at a high clip there as well so a tremendous season for the South uh, player of the year three times South champions in Fall River. Mm -hmm. and that brings us to Central Wisconsin Christian Junior forward Tyler DeYoung. Uh, just a, a kid who uh, I thought uh, could be a stretch four uh, in a lot of ways, so almost a stretch five uh, based on the way they, they played him. Uh, could shoot from the outside, shot 36% um, shot from three-point range, and, and really uh, improved uh, in, in that area, I thought, especially. Yeah, I think for me, uh, just really, just a bigger physical frame and just really was able to, you know, grind it out in the post, just really, uh, you know, a difficult physical kid to handle there, and then he steps out behind the arc and was able to shoot three threes, really difficult uh, matchup where the Crusaders were concerned, and uh, I thought uh, just showed some real maturity down the stretch, and especially in the postseason, the difference between the two Fall River games, it got away a little bit at the end during the regular season, but... Uh, then in the postseason, uh, you know, he really stayed composed and uh, was a big part of them reaching the sectional final. Interesting, uh, in the in that sectional semifinal against Catholic Central, he picked up his third foul very early in the second half, and I don't believe made a foul the rest of the ball game, and really managed to, to stay on the floor and and was still a physical presence against them. Yeah, and a guy they desperately needed. Uh, things really kind of rotated around him. Um, Another first teamer, uh, Wayland senior guard Janos Balkan. Um, John was just, <laughs> I mean, what can you say about him in terms of uh, he could do, he dribble, pass, shoot. Uh, it was a quadruple double almost waiting to happen. <laughs> uh, the game again he had against Dodgeland early in the year, I think he was a rebound and a steal shy of a quadruple double. It was ridiculous. Yeah, just uh, incredible quickness, and but uh, you know for all the things he did well, and it was a lot of them. 
I really feel like his ability to distribute the ball is just really special. He just had a, a great knack for finding people. We talked about before that, uh, you know, kind of a highlight real player, just a kid that's fun to watch. And in the Fall River game, uh, their last playoff game, the regional semifinal, Fall River has a number of kids that are pretty quick, and uh, Fall River really had difficulty containing him. And uh, in a lot of ways, they had the, the having to, to drag him up and down the court the entire time really, uh, I thought, affected them against uh, CWC the next night. Sure, absolutely. Um, then we also have senior forward Kyle Roberts from Randolph. Um, just another kid that can just do a lot of things really well, just very versatile, range out to the arc. Um, just more quickness really than most people could handle in terms of being in the paint. Uh, could drive past bigger post players and just... Uh, really important component for the Rockets. And uh, just and, and going, going along with that, being a senior and, and, and one of only two guys to be back from that state championship team uh, in 2013, uh, just a, a real leader for that team and, and, and in a lot of ways had to be. And I mean, he had to be the guy that did the, the scoring and the rebounding and, and I thought he handled it very well. Yeah, and then you look at the end of the season, unfortunately, uh, had the knee injury late and uh, Randolph was just a shell of itself without him, unfortunately. Um, he also had a teammate that was also a first-teamer, uh, junior guard Duke Vanderdalen, uh, who ended up in the top five in the Trailways North in scoring, steals, and assists, just a dynamic playmaker. Um, really a, a kind of an extension going back to that postseason run from a year, from a, from a year ago. He uh, really took off at State, I thought, and really... Uh, continued that uh, throughout the year. Just a, a very consistent player, game in, game out, and uh, uh, a nightmare for teams to try to have to match up with. Yeah, and uh, I was impressed. Uh, shot the three well and took it a little more this year, so I had some range to his game. Uh, very accurate from the free throw line, and anytime you got a combination of a guy with his quickness, his ball handling ability, and a quality free throw shooter, uh, the four corners that Randolph would run late in games of the lead is just completely made for him. Moving on to the second team, we have uh, a junior from Columbus, Kyle Geiger, who uh, really was consistent, uh, a team stuck in just a really brutal league in the Capital North or whatever, but uh, Geiger maintained his offensive production. Yeah, I, I was surprised when I went back through and, and saw some of the stats that he had 32 against Lake Mills uh, going up against Turner Mullen, who's, I think he was an all-state player, and uh, you know having to go up against Jordan Shea and you know, I think they played Cam Ward and Marshall, too, during the year. It, it, that's a brutal, brutal, brutal division, and, and, and he's just a guy that was uh, not afraid to take take shots. Yeah, and big ones as well. I saw him play against Cuba City, who ended up making the sectional finals at Wisconsin Dells, and Cuba City never really found an answer for him. Uh, moving along, uh, on the second team, we also have Nick Paczynski from Wayland, um, just a, one of the top scorers in the state, averaging over 22 points per game. James, you want to talk more about Nick? Yeah, just uh, I, I thought he was a guy who uh, really improved over last year, um, defensively especially. He could guard anywhere between a two and a five on the floor if need be, uh, and, and really kind of gave them a little bit of versatility in terms of what they could do defensively. Yeah, and then of course offensively with his range, you know, you've got Osbalkin's ability to penetrate and his ability to shoot from range and stretch the court. Uh, you know, Fall River, he was plagued by a little bit of foul trouble, didn't have his best game in the playoffs or whatever, but he's still in the second half, hit a couple of incredibly difficult shots that are just giving you an indication of a kid that, and well, you can see why he scores over 22 a game. I would say one of the quickest shots in the area, too. Absolutely. No time to <laughs> waste it in terms of getting <laughs> it off. Uh, he had a teammate that also made the second team, Eric Bobble, seemed forward. Um, 15 and 15 a game, just, uh, boy, did he clean the glass. Um, yeah, and when he, he missed the first couple of games of the year uh, due to injury, and when he got back into the lineup, Whalen's offense, which was already pretty potent with Oz Balkan and, and Pajinski, really took off and, and hit a whole other dimension. And I mean, they would routinely put 65, 70, 75 points. I think they even put 80, 85 up a few times during the season. Just a, a really became a perfect complement to, to everything that they did. Yeah, and just uh, physically maturing as a senior, I think, uh, was really helpful for him. Just uh, a little sturdier frame, a little more explosion, especially in terms of uh, attacking the glass. And so, you know, I think the win they had over CWC really surprised some people. But when you look at how their big three 
played per se or whatever, uh, you know, you understood how that result happened a little more. Very fun team to watch. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> then uh, also on the second team, Fall River senior forward Tom Waterworth. Uh, in my mind, best defensive player in the area. Just great combination of foot speed, quickness, size, strength, savvy. Did all the little things that you needed to do to win games. You were on him really early in the year, and uh, I hadn't, I didn't see him until uh, basically I think after after the new year, and and I got to see him two or three times, and, and yeah, you could tell he he's the type of guy that it's kind of a real glue guy in a lot of ways. Um, but uh, one of the things I talked about with uh, Coach Elke uh, from Fall River is he's one of the best passing players out of the post that he's ever had, and that's a high compliment coming from a guy like Ernie. Yeah, and he showed a little bit of range, too, uh, you know, with his jumper, and he was just way too quick off the dribble uh, against other fours or fives. They were able to slot him to more of a four situation, uh, power forward type, and that really suited him well. And I'm just thinking, uh, just defensively, he just did it time and time again throughout the season, gave Kyle Roberts fits in the opener against Randolph. And when they played Barnabell, the quality team up Wisconsin Dells, they just kept going in the paint and going after Waterworth, and he just slammed the door shut on him, basically. I was just laughing after a while, because I was sitting next to the Fall River bench. I'm just like, they're going at our best defensive player in the area, and that's why they can't get anything. So <laughs> Waterworth had a tremendous season, and the final uh, player on the second team, Cody Zonnefeld, the junior from Central Wisconsin Christian. Uh, just a, a, a tremendous athlete. I think that's the first thing you notice uh, between him, uh, you know, basketball and soccer and and everything else, I mean, just a, a smooth athlete, and uh, he was big, especially I thought in the uh, sectional semifinal against Catholic Central, where they they needed some somebody to, to attack the paint, and he was the guy that really stepped stepped up in that role. Yeah, I thought he added an extra dimension as well in terms of a guy that uh, had some length, could shoot from the outside, could attack the rim, uh, had the game-winning layup in overtime against Randolph in that big win. Um, I just feel like the guy that really kind of tied it all together for the Crusaders. And then, um, you know, that regional final where they were able to win at Fall River, I thought the defensive work he did against Bull really made it difficult on the Pirates. And, uh, you know, a guy that played through some injuries or whatever, but... Uh, when he was in the lineup, he made a difference, certainly. I was going to say that uh, that Whalen loss that they had, that first loss of the year when they were ranked third in the state, uh, it's a little, no reason, no small reason why uh, they struggled during the middle part of the year, and that was because he was fighting through those injuries. So you can tell his value when he wasn't in the lineup. And that's our boys' all-area basketball team for the 2013-2014 season.